Here's some of the stories trending this week at NASA. A July 24th update at NASA headquarters featured new surprising imagery and science results from the recent flyby of Pluto by the New Horizons spacecraft. This image from the Long Range Reconnaissance Imager, or LORI, looking back at Pluto hours after the historic flyby, revealed a haze in the planet's sunlit atmosphere that extends as high as 80 miles above Pluto's surface, much higher than expected. Models suggest that the hazes form when ultraviolet sunlight breaks apart methane gas. LORI images also show evidence that exotic ices have flowed and may still be flowing across Pluto's surface, similar to glacial movement on Earth. This unpredicted sign of present-day geologic activity was detected in Sputnik Planum, an area in the western part of Pluto's heart-shaped Tombaugh Regio. Additionally, new compositional data from New Horizons' Ralph instrument indicate that the center of Sputnik Planum is rich in nitrogen, carbon monoxide, and methane isis. NASA's Kepler mission has confirmed the first near-Earth-sized planet orbiting a sun-like star's habitable zone, the range of distances from a star where liquid water might pool on a planet's surface. While smaller planets have previously been found in the rare habitable zone, the newly discovered Kepler-452b is the first orbiting around a star like our own sun. NASA's Shell Lindgren and Expedition 44 crewmates Oleg Kononenko of the Russian Federal Space Agency and Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Kamiya Yui launched from Kazakhstan aboard a Soyuz spacecraft July 22nd to begin a five-month mission on the International Space Station. When they reached the station six hours later, they were greeted by Station Commander Gennady Padalka of Roscosmos, NASA Flight Engineer Scott Kelly, and Russian Flight Engineer Mikhail Kornienko. A NASA camera on the Discover satellite has returned its first view of the entire sunlit side of Earth from one million miles away. The Earth Polychromatic Imaging Camera, or EPIC, takes a series of 10 images using different narrow bands from ultraviolet to near-infrared filters to produce a variety of science products. The bluish tint of the initial images is a characteristic effect of sunlight scattered by air molecules. The EPIC team expects to have daily images posted to a dedicated web server by September. Discover is a partnership between NASA, NOAA, and the U.S. Air Force to maintain real-time solar wind monitoring capabilities. NASA Deputy Administrator David Newman continues to visit NASA centers to meet the NASA family and see the work being done around the country on behalf of the agency. During a recent trip to Ames Research Center in Northern California, Newman signed an agreement with U.S. Department of Agriculture Deputy Secretary Krista Hardin to increase collaboration in earth science research, agriculture management, and to inspire youth to pursue STEM careers. The visit also included a demonstration highlighting NASA and USDA research data and a town hall meeting with new center director Eugene Tu, employees, and students. NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida took another step in its transformation to a 21st century multi-user spaceport with a recent completion of a new small class vehicle launch pad. The new launch pad, designated 39C, is designed for smaller aerospace companies and will enable them to develop and launch their vehicles from Kennedy. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov twan.